On this, of course, we have to talk about the Euro 2020 final that happened yesterday. Unfortunately, it's not coming home and England lost on penalties 3 2 to Italy after the fourth the game in 90 minutes finished 1 1. Um, bitterly, bitterly disappointing, of course, being an England fan myself, um, but also not that surprising. I think throughout the entire time of the Euros, I've said even prior to that also, um, I've always kind of seen Southgate very similar to how Ole Gunnar Solskjaer is, and he's obviously time managing Manchester United where for the most part it feels as if the fans outside or people outside of the club seem to have a very different idea of or seem to have a different perception of what's actually going on as to the as opposed to the fans and even some of the fans are very much split in terms of how they regard the coach um there's a lot of Oli sexuals as they call them a lot of people that are very much on Oli out in, just in general but the one thing that concerned me the, the one thing that concerned me in general about um, Gareth Southgate is the fact that he is way too conservative, especially given the talent in the England squad. I think it goes without saying that the England squad in general is very much um, blessed in the attacking areas, not so much in the midfield, maybe, you know, somewhat st decent in defence and the goalkeeping situations a bit of a muchness i don't think there's much separating you know uh pickford henderson and who i forgot the other guys pope right they were all kind of on the same sort of level but in the attack is where really england sort of separate themselves from some of the other countries out there and you would imagine with the attacking talent that we have that if you feel an england manager you would just make sure you have a somewhat competent and solid midfield and defense and you just flood the attack with as many attacking talents as you can and basically create or put together systems of play that bring out the best in them or if, you, if need be just tell the front five or six to basically freestyle it and hope to kind of outscore teams um when needed but obviously Southgate doesn't do that and he kind of favors a double pivot two defensive midfielders and Calvin Phillips and Declan Rice playing in front of um it looks like five defenders themselves or sometimes three depending on how you view the wing backs for the most part five so it's a very defense heavy system it kind of feels like he's sort of copying what Deschamps and what um what's his name Santos is that the guy Santos from Portugal the Portugal um national team manager where essentially they just hoped that their special players would win the game but then they kind of prioritized defense first it kind of works so far so good for England going through but again England had the easier run up up until the final they faced some of the more weaker nations all the way through they weren't necessarily tested and the times they were tested they kind of but managed to go through and Italy of course had to beat the best of the best to get to the final so all common sense told you more likely than not Italy would win in 90 minutes so And taking the, making the best out of what we have in terms of our tools and attacking players. But then it felt like as soon as that goal went in, England kind of took their foot off the pedal, it felt like, in the first half. Maybe uh, maybe from the half an hour onwards. And they kind of rested on their laurels and hoped to maybe hang on until half time. But then once half time happened and we kind of crossed over the 60 minutes barrier, it felt as if the players in general just decided, okay, cool, we're going to just try and hang on to this 1-0 as much as possible and try and cut them on the break. And I just don't think you could do that. I think... in the subsequent minutes and then obviously the other team usually gets with gains control in the 10 15 minute mark but usually if you score really quickly in the first half you then have a 20 minute period where you can kind of sustain some pressure uh put the defense obviously unnerve them because if you remember in the first half a lot of the italian players were kind of struggling to kind of find each other there was a lot of kind of in there was a lot of kind of um infighting that was happening on the pitch we could have kind of an experienced team a team with actually a lot more attacking players and they would take advantage of that and kind of exasperate the situation a bit more and squeeze the vice but we didn't so i think in general if we're looking at the balance of the game italy probably deserved to win i think maybe obviously england definitely deserved their lead i think they played very well in that opening maybe five to ten minutes 
but then as soon as I felt like the game changed for me again this is kind of a slight to say oh, again, the possession stats 66 possess possession for Italy to our 34 mama mia and they've got double the passes again maybe a lot of the passes were uh, around the back but it felt like for me as soon as Italy took off Immobile who was really again immobile and very ineffective in the game overall and they sort of um, switched insignia to play in the middle and they kind of had a lot more fluidity and interchanging of passes around this midfield and front three. The game completely changed. It felt like obviously a kind of scruffy goal. Pickford did well in terms of saving it, but he ends up kind of following in like a striker on the move. They end up getting a one-one, and then they felt like it was only going to go one way. It's the only team really pushing to try and win the game in the ninety minutes, and then for some reason. The subs come really late again for Southgate. Um, Grealish, I think, comes on first. Then it was Jaden Snow. I think, no, actually, Jordan Henderson came on first, if I'm not mistaken, right? Which is insane, which kind of shows you everything that's kind of wrong with the current approach, I think, going forward. And it's, it's hard to say, right? Because England obviously got to the final. It's hard to kind of criticise um, Southgate too much. But unfortunately, this is the nature of elite sports in general. No one really cares or remembers the good that you've done if you don't end up taking the trophy home. So in general, I think, um, especially in this game itself, just taking it specifically on this game, so Southgate should have responded a lot more or definitely tried to change things when things really weren't going his way. Maybe Saka should have come on a lot more sooner. Maybe you shouldn't have brought on Henderson as your first substitution. But there should have been something to maybe change the flow of the game because it felt as if like a lot of players especially in the second half were hiding i'd say or not hiding but they're necessarily effective the declan rice is a good example mason mount uh playing as a number 10 or on the left wing on the right side wasn't really working too well harry kane was somewhat isolated even though when he got the ball he was holding up pretty well he was fairly quiet sterling of course again was the only one really kind of buzzing around and trying to find attacks but still again he wasn't really effective i thought the fullbacks were very defensive minded um, they weren't necessarily pushing forward as much. I think after the first, maybe again, after there was a couple of, there was a, maybe a cross in the second half. But I don't remember Shaw getting up too often. I don't remember Kieran and Kyle Walker. Sorry. Kyle Walker, yeah, Kieran Trippier even, even getting forward too often. The fullbacks were very defensive-minded overall. Um, again, maybe it's because Italy changed formation and tactics and ended up kind of being a lot more expansive, but I felt as if there should have been a change in personnel or tactic for something to Then the game already has kind of the momentum so it's shifted and it's it England and England have got to kind of make a change here. I just feel like this team just can't do that. And I don't think international football you can how you would you can't kind of shit house your way to a cup. You can't I mean you have to kind of um present some threat to the team that you're facing. I think the only time we've seen it so far has been Greece in the Euros, right? Where they've kind of been able to kind of just sharp shop and just play a really ne a really kind of defensive mind negative defensive-minded way of football and that's maybe paid dividends for them but in general you can't really do that you have like you kind of have to go on the front foot a little bit so that was kind of disappointing to see and then of course the penalties people are then saying the penalties are lottery i don't necessarily believe that i think um, penalties aren't a lottery i think you practice penalties you, you know you let your best penalty takers take them there's a there's certain techniques that work the best but i feel as if when Jorginho missed his penalty, it kind of felt like to me the players didn't expect him to miss. So when Shaw, when sorry, when Pickford saved that pen, it felt as if the pressure was back on England for some reason. And then of course, off the back of Stancho and and Rashford missing, the pressure was just too much. Maybe for Saka, and he kind of obviously um, felt it a little bit, and he obviously missed, and then that handed the trophy to Italy. Now the negativity around the players is going to start all the racial abuse and stuff. You know the standard protocol that happens whenever England lose, but. I think in general, if we kind of look out, maybe it was a, obviously a great kind of campaign overall. I think the what we've basically been able to prove is that this England team can compete at this level. Um, I think the World Cup is going to be far difficult, far more difficult. I think the level of competition is a lot higher in the World Cup than it is in the Euros. I think we've definitely seen that um, going forward. Some of the smaller nations in kind of world football, even South American nations like the Perus and Chiles will give uh, England a lot of issues with they, if they end up facing even the Mexicos or the like and the USA. So there is a lot of teams there that could upset and kind of... Um, kind of stop England's progression in the World Cup but since the World Cup is only what is it like a year later so next year or something right it kind of gives 
this team time to bounce back um, and obviously get some more experience under the belt and hopefully be able to come good again. But again, I just think kind of conservative nature of Gareth Southgate is always going to... and kind of distribution of the ball going forward obviously um if enrico if sort of ambidextrous in that way he can go left or right um has a real good shot on either foot as well can cross the ball fairly effectively just a very 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 good winger man very good player overall insignia may be the most frustrating player in italy um he doesn't seem to have a middle ground he's either he's world class or he's very average he doesn't seem to play in the middle at all whatsoever um so that's very frustrating to see immobile was pretty terrible i think if anything italy are probably lacking a very um Kind of, they don't really have any star quality men. Uh, you know, they're kind of well-rounded overall, but they don't really have a great standout striker. I think between Immobile and Belotti, pretty much as a muchness, is not very great in terms of quality overall. So they're probably still crying out for a proper, you know, um, number nine think that they can kind of use and kind of pin up up front and sort of use as a kind of you know quasi Luca Tony battering ram or somebody to run off run on for the ball or just finish goals in general but they're kind of lacking in that but overall a very well balanced team they were able to kind of bank from the injury crisis with um Spinner Zoli Emerson kind of deputized really well Di Lorenzo played well as well like just generally an overall kind of well-rounded team and definitely the team that kind of deserved the overall in the Euros so congrats it's not coming home it's going to 